Hello, Royal Dominion Authority. My name is Ashley, and this is Royal Dominion Authority. Hello, you all. Okay, let's start over. Hello, everyone. My name is Ashley, and this is Royal Dominion Authority. <laughs> I'm so goofy, y'all. But anyways, I hope everybody is well. I hope you all are doing good. I just wanted to come and stop by and give you all an encouraging word. Um, I'm always giving encouraging words, but that's who I am, right? And I enjoy giving encouraging words when I know that the Lord is speaking. And I hope that you guys enjoy listening, not only listening, but receiving from the Lord, you all, because it's not I, it's really God. And I just, I'm just grateful that God allows to use me and I have to stand in obedience with that time come because I never know who this word will be for. But I hope that you all have had a great weekend, a great day on today and a great week within the last week. You all had to take a little rest because your girl was not feeling good. There's something going on around here. I don't know what it is, but I was a little under the weather. But you know, God has brought me back. God has sustained me. God has healed me, you all. And I am good. And I am back to my old crazy self, okay? Listen, y'all, I love y'all. And I just want to let you all know that God is healing where it hurts. Yes, God is healing where it hurts. God is healing those areas in those places in your life where you are hurting, right? God is in the process. He's in the business, the miracle working business, the healing business, the sustaining business, the strengthening business to heal you where it hurts, the breakthrough business. I just heard that for somebody. God says somebody is looking for a breakthrough and he's in that business ready to hand you your breakthrough. He's on your street. But God says you got to be able to trust in him and know that he's working it out. He's coming. God says, I hear your heart cry. God, is healing where it hurts so a few minutes ago god gave me a song that he laid on my heart a song that i used to listen to when i was younger you all um kurt franklin called hold me now from kurt franklin hold me now okay and you all when he put this song on my heart i was like wow i haven't you know heard this song in a long time but god is really showing me that there are some people that are hurting you know, there are some people that are wounded, that are broken, that are tired, that's wondering, you know, God, when is it going to be my turn for restoration? When is it going to be my turn that you is going to mend my broken heart? When is it going to be my turn that those certain things will turn in my favor because I need rest? I need to be renewed. I need to be restrengthened. I need to be put back together. You know, my heart has been shattered in pieces and God, I just need you. Okay. God said, I'm coming, I'm here. But there is a scripture that God laid on my heart, which was 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, where God says that if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, then he will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land. And somebody is just on the brink of that promise that God made to us when he says that if we humble ourselves and pray, somebody has gone before the Lord. This is a confirmation word. This is a word of confirmation. And this is also a word to somebody who has not gone before the Lord and humbled themselves and prayed about it. Because we can hold a lot of things in our heart and wonder and, 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 and hope on things, but we're not actually giving those things to God and saying, Hey God, this is my issue. And I need help right now. God, I need you to come through God. And God is either saying, this is for you that you've not really brought it to him. Like he know that you're dealing with certain things or whatever, but you probably really ain't really brought it to him, you know? And this is also for another group of people who has brought these cares to God, who has brought their issues and concerns to God, right? And God is saying, I am about to move on your behalf. Yeah. Because you decided to humble yourself and pray. Because you decided to seek me. Because you decided to really lean on and, and lean into the throne. Because you walked in expectancy and you just know in your heart of hearts that I am going to answer, says God. Now I am stepping off of my throne to answer. And some people need divine judgment in their life. And I'm not saying that God going to put the hammer down on your head. I'm saying some people need to be um, um, pay back for something that was taken from them. I don't know why I just heard this in the spirit, recompense and reciprocity, 
but some things have been taken from you, right? And God is getting ready to pay you back and he's getting ready to pay the repay the person and cause recompense on their head for what they've done to you. Am I in the house? Yeah. And you know, some people just need a, a, a heart to be mended. You know, some people want to forgive, but they like, God, I've been tussling with this thing. I want to forgive. I don't hate this person. I don't dislike this person, but I'm broken. I'm hurt. And I need to know how to move forward. God is moving on your behalf. And if you've been asking God for forgiveness and it just feels like you haven't been forgiven and you've been tussling, God is saying, I've forgiven you, but you got to walk in it. You got to forgive yourself and you got to believe that I've forgiven you and you got to walk in forgiveness. And if you're asking for healing or peace, you got to walk in that thing because the enemy will set it up and make it seem like God has not granted you certain things and God has granted it to you because it's in his word. But God is saying there are some things that he's already granted that you're not yet walking in because you don't quite believe it because you don't see, you know, anything changing. It's like you like doubt in time is right. Where you have inactive faith. You only believe it if you see it. But God is saying, what if I told you that I already did it? Are you going to walk in it? Even if you don't actually see it physically, I've already done it spiritually. Are you going to walk in it as if it is already done? Because it is. So Proverbs 18 and 13. No. Proverbs 14. I'm sorry, y'all. Proverbs 18 verses 14 through 16. It says, the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So God is saying you may be sick right in your heart. And it may be broken and weary and tired and lonely and frustrated and depleted and, and whatever. You know, you may be sick in your heart, but God, but God says because your spirit man is in righteousness, because your spirit man is unto me, because you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, because you trust in me, because you put your hope in me, because you put your faith in me. I will allow your, because you allow your spirit man to govern you and not your flesh because you allowed your spirit man to lead you on down the road of hope, right? You will be sustained. You are being sustained. You are being taken care of because you trusted in the word of the Lord God. But who can bear a broken spirit? God is saying your spirit is broken, but I am allowing you to bear it because I've put it in you. I've put it on you to bear. God says, I will put nothing on you that you can't bear because I am going to be the one to make the room the, the way for an escape. But God is saying, because your spirit is like my spirit, I'm allowing you to go through some things in this season because when I bring you out, you'll look back and be like, Man, God did that. You know, you'll look back and be like, That wasn't nothing but God, and you will thank God. For the trial and the tribulation and the despair because it, it really made you stronger. It really built your strength. It really built your character. Who am I talking to? Verse 15, it says, the heart of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. God is saying, because you're not a fool, you don't despise knowledge. But you lean into knowledge and wisdom, the, the statues of God, the good things of God, because you lean in on what God has to say about you and the, your promise in your life and the things that he thinks of you. Because you lean in onto this God-given knowledge that God has given you, he has made you wise because you, you acquire of the Lord. You, you chose to listen and not, not listen, right? Because your gift, what God has given you, see, God gives some one, God gives some three, and God gives some five and ten talents, you know. But God says, whatever it is that I've given you, your gifts and your talents, whatever it is that's special about you will make room for you. But you got to be able to tap into it. 
It's going to bring you before great men. God is saying that God, in, in due time, you're going to be elevated in such a way. You're going to be like, I'm glad that I tapped into what God told me to tap into. Because if I didn't, I would have missed out on so much more. But I'm so glad that I said yes to God. I'm so glad that I endured. I'm so glad that I pressed my way. I'm so glad that I trusted God. Because his unmerited favor is upon my life. And I'm so glad that I allowed God, God to do what he needed to do on the inside of me because now I'm healed and not broken because now I'm whole and not broken. And now I can really see the goodness of God. I can really see the hand of God. I'm so glad that I put my trust, my hope in the Lord. And now God can hold me because I know when he holds me, I know what it feel like. Come on. I just wanted to come and encourage you all on today that God is healing your hurt. He's healing where it's hurt, where it hurts. God is healing you where it hurts. But if you have not let God in, you got to let him in so that he can do it. Let him into those places where it's hard to let him into and see what God will do for you. See how God will work that thing out for you. God will blow your mind, you all. And I know that you know God. But eyes have not seen, your eyes have not seen everything that God can do for you. But you got to let him in. I remember last year, my pastor told me that it was so many things that I about missed out on because I wasn't open to God as I needed to be. I was still radical for God, still preaching his word, still bold, still not playing with the enemy. But there were some places in my heart that I had shut God out of. So God was not able to do the work. So therefore, I was not able to get what I needed from God because there were certain doors that were closed. Like I had a wall up, so to say. And when I let my walls down, my God, can I get an amen, somebody? When we let our walls down and we allow God to come in, to enter in and do his work, because God requires us to do a work, but he also requires us to allow him to do a work in us so that we can continue to be shaped and molded, right? The way that he needs to be. So if you need to be put back on the potter's wheel today. Say, Lord God, fix me, God. You are the potter and I am the clay. Do it, God. Listen, I love you all. That, that's it. That's the word for today. Um, Freedom Sundays. That's it. I should have said it in the beginning, but yes, this is Freedom Sundays. I love y'all. I just pray y'all strength. Y'all pray my strength. I'm praying for y'all always. If there are any special prayer requests that you need me to come into agreement with, if it be God's will, we're going to tackle that thing. And baby, we're going to come into agreement with it. Royal Dominion 20 at yahoo.com. Royal Dominion 20 at yahoo.com. 101 request. Royal Dominion 20 at yahoo.com. If you don't know the Lord, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you are saved. And that is by, by uh, letting God know that I believe that the Lord Jesus died for me. I believe that he rose on the third day. I believe that his blood was shed for the, uh, uh, the, the remission of my sins. I believe that the Lord Jesus is my savior. Okay. That's all it takes. And then God will do the rest. The Lord will go from there. All it takes is a confession with your mouth and a believing in your heart that, that Jesus Christ is Lord and you're saved. Listen, I love you all until next time. Again, my name is Ashley. This is Royal Dominion Authority Car Chronicles. As y'all can see, get into it. I love you all.